All right, I'm out here opening a bottle of wine and climbing into a dumpster. Let's do this. Homestuck is a webcomic that ran from 2009 to 2016. It follows the story of four kids who accidentally end the universe by playing a video game. Winning the game will create a new universe, but the aliens who created our universe have to get involved as their game session had some complications with far-reaching effects. There's also time travel, moon civilizations, alternate universes, and many other things. That's a massive oversimplification of the plot, but it's a long story, and if I described every location and character, we'd be here all day. I was big into Homestuck when I was around 16, 17, before I got an English degree and when I was also, you know, a child. I fell out of the fandom during one of the big pauses, and after that I just never finished this beast despite considering it one of my favorite stories of all time at the time. I still had a fondness for it, but I never felt compelled to finish it. Until now, apparently. In December of 2020, I heard that Adobe Flash was basically going completely obsolete, and I had this very surreal realization that the disappearance of Flash would basically destroy half of Homestuck unless they somehow reformatted it. I got curious, went to homestuck.com, discovered that they were indeed reformatting it, and the next thing I know I'm on page 1000 of the webcomic and the effort justification starts to sink in. So I finished it. And now I have to talk about it. And for the record, this isn't going to be a fandom retrospective. Now that it's 2022 and we're so far removed from Homestuck Mania, we might as well try talking about the actual series instead of the fan culture that surrounded it. This video also isn't about Wet Pumpkin or the development of Hive Swap, mostly because 99% of the script was written before I knew about any of that stuff, uh, but also because this video is about Homestuck and not really about Andrew Hussey. Although I wouldn't blame you if your knowledge of the latter affects your thoughts on the former. Part 1. Is it good? <laughs> so, once I officially started rereading, I went in with relatively low expectations. I've seen and read a lot more things now, and my standards as an adult and my standards as a teenager are vastly different. So imagine my horror when I got to Act 5 on my reread and realized that I was still well on my way to giving the series a solid 10 out of 10. Like, unironically. Trust me, I would love nothing more than to make a thing bad video about Homestuck. Partially because that would probably do better on YouTube, and also because I know it's super cringy to admit to liking Homestuck in this day and age. But I'm not here to lie to you. I think it's good. I basically share all the general praise that most people have. It's wildly creative, the presentation can get really interesting, the character dynamics are entertaining, the dialogue is clever, it's really funny. In fact, I found myself laughing out loud more this time around. And it's legitimately compelling, even though it takes a while to get going. I don't think it's perfect, and I'll get to the bad stuff later, but I don't think it's in any way overrated. That's not to say that having an older perspective hasn't changed my opinion on some things, both positively and negatively. I definitely took more plot points seriously as a kid, even though in hindsight most of it is intentionally very silly. Homestuck is a comedy, and while it does have some genuine emotional beats, the vast majority of it is more fun than it is deep. And that's not a bad thing, that's just what it is. On the reread, I also couldn't help but notice the glut of expository dialogue, but a lot of said dialogue is spoken by funny or interesting characters, or better yet, the stuff that they're explaining is so weird that it's just inherently interesting. Plus, even though some of the bigger plot concepts require explaining, a lot of the actual story beats fly by at breakneck speed, and the reader is trusted to put the pieces together. The page titled Cascade is a 13 minute long video with almost no spoken dialogue, and it's this page that ties a lot of the major moments previously seen in the series together. It explains and displays the order that things happened in this incredibly non-linear story, plus introducing brand new and majorly important plot points. And then as a punchline, this is where the recap stop. You are forced to put this whole convoluted thing together based purely on the visual information. And I love that. I loved it as a teenager and I love it now. Putting stuff together is my jam, and it just creates a more engaging reading experience. And the story truly is engaging. I once heard someone say it's the act of reading Homestuck that makes Homestuck fun, more so than the actual plot or themes or anything like that. And I'm tempted to agree. 
It's just fun to learn about the new unique concepts, to enjoy the fantastic writing, to watch the style and format change in new ways, and to see how these seemingly disconnected plots all interact with each other. Part 2. What is Homestuck even about? What I mean by that is, is Homestuck about anything? I've heard it said that Andrew Hussey used almost a million words to say nothing at all, and I can kind of see what people mean by that. Homestuck isn't really packed with themes, especially for a story of its length, but it does get more thematically coherent as it goes on, and it's definitely a coming-of-age story. Most, if not all, of the character arcs revolve around two things. One, fully understanding your own upbringing and or society, and two, recognizing behaviors that need to be changed in order to fully mature as a person. This can take the form of relatively simple and comedic stuff, like John outgrowing old movies, or stuff that's actually kind of heavy. Stuff like Roxy realizing that she has a drinking problem, or Vriska describing how her violent society and upbringing has made her okay with killing and thinking about how that looks from an outside perspective. In my opinion, the most emotional arc culmination comes when Dirk and Dave first meet. They're both in an awkward position where talking to each other forces them to confront some pretty harsh realities. Dave spent a good chunk of the early part of the series justifying and rationalizing his older brother's actions, even though it was made pretty clear to the audience that, at the very least, he wasn't as happy with his life as he pretended to be. This conversation with Dirk is the first time in the story where Dave really opens up to someone about how he actually felt growing up. Neglected, hated, disturbed, and hurt, both physically and emotionally, at the hands of his guardian. Meanwhile, Dirk i.e. the alternate timeline version of Dave's brother, has to confront the reality that a version of him did this to Dave, and he's not even really surprised. He spent a lot of Act 6 talking to splintered versions of himself that he hates, and dealing with romantic and platonic relationships in which he feels his involvement was always negative. Dave then pointing out that the key difference between Dirk and his brother is that Dirk actually takes the time to contemplate the morality of his actions. Speaking of Dirk, I also want to talk about Homestuck's approach to LGBT plus stuff, because honestly, I think it was mine, and a lot of people's, first introduction to the more fluid aspect of sexuality. Instead of just saying being gay is okay, it goes the extra step of saying the very concept of being gay should be normalized. That might not sound like a high bar in 2022, but at the time it was a more unique take. And I'm not making any claims that Homestuck was like revolutionary in terms of queer media. I'm just saying that it got my high school friend group to think about it a bit more, and I don't think we were the only ones. The trolls don't even have the concept of sexual orientation. Meanwhile, characters like Jake and Dave are actively questioning their sexuality and realizing that society might play a part in whether or not people see themselves as straight. Rose just casually comes out as a lesbian by asking Kanaya on a date. And then we have Dirk, who embodies many masculine stereotypes while also being 100% unambiguously gay and out of the closet. I don't know, I guess it's just interesting. It also leads to some good conflicts, some of which are comedic and some of which are emotional. All right, now let me get out of this clown costume and pour an extra glass of wine because I'm going to actually talk about the stuff that I didn't like. Part 3. Stuff I Didn't Like Even when I read Homestuck as a teenager, I definitely preferred the first half to the second half. At the time, I never thought it got bad, but it did get worse. I still like the Alpha Kids a lot, with Dirk and now Roxy as well, ranking high among my favorite characters, but I feel like their romantic squabbles consist largely of stuff I've seen before. Something something love square. Something something the guy I liked forgot my birthday. Something something my friend wants to date the guy I want to date. Something something I'm insecure about my weight, etc. It just feels weird compared to the rest of the series which is packed to the brim with things I've never seen before. Admittedly, the dynamic of the love square is unique because of the time shenanigans and varying sexualities of the characters, but the actual dialogue and drama feels like it could have come from anywhere. But I will definitely say that the alpha kids resolving their bullshit while on the god tier beds was pretty great. I liked it. Another big criticism I have of the second half revolves around Caliborn slash Lord English. 
He's not a terrible villain on a conceptual level, but Caliborn mostly just annoys me? Well, Lord English isn't nearly as interesting as literally every other villain in the story. Jack is a drastically overpowered villain whose strength and abilities come from one of the kid's strongest allies, and said ally affects his subconscious and emotional attachments. Doc Scratch is charming, evil, and he has what are, in my opinion, by far the best fourth wall breaks in the series. The Contest is serviceable as a villain, but made a bit more interesting since we see her alternate universe self in more of a protagonist role. Gamzee delivers an amazing monologue that I still find kind of terrifying and suspenseful even as an adult and satisfies the comedic but unhinged villain role way more than Caliborn as he is actively involved with the central characters more directly. Fresca is so important that her death, resurrection, and character arc define the trajectory of the entire series. Lord English is annoying, and then he is big, and the journey that led him from being annoying to being big mostly happens off-screen. I also have mixed feelings about the dream bubble mechanic. I do think it lowers the stakes quite significantly, like death becomes somewhat meaningless when every character is just chilling in the afterlife. On the flip side, there is still a consequence of dying, stagnation. Dying just means your role in the story is over. The only reason we focus on the ghosts at all is because Lord English invades. The ghosts themselves can't really affect the Alpha timeline, making the Ring of Life a desirable object. Plus, the actual idea of the afterlife being a series of memories that you travel through is actually pretty interesting. The concept as a whole is really just a mixed bag. Of course, there's the problematic elements that are mostly concentrated to the game section with the Dancesters. Some jokes rely on racist stereotypes and arguably ableism, which at best haven't aged well and at worst really weren't that funny in the first place. But Real talk here. I think the only large element of Homestuck that's a slog to get through is the excessive breaking of the fourth wall. And don't get me wrong, I love meta stuff, and I think most of Homestuck's playing around with the fourth wall actually works really well. At first. Like, I'm okay with Hussey inserting themselves to do recaps. I'm okay with having a very literal fourth wall be an item in the story. And I'm even okay with Caliborn's interactions with Hussey as some sort of unknown entity. Also, the section at the tail end of Act 5 that takes place in Doc Scratch's apartment is sheer genius in terms of presentation. Just saying. With all of that said, there comes a point in Act 6 where the line gets a little too blurry for me. Hussey has way more in-story interactions that don't really make sense, and the regular narration gets increasingly hung up on jokes at the expense of the story. Somehow all of this leads to Hussey both praising themselves and insulting themselves to the point where it becomes distracting. Plus, constantly drawing attention to the unreality of your own story makes it difficult for readers to suspend their disbelief. On top of all of this, Hussey actively jabs at slash insults the audience quite a few times, and it becomes pretty annoying pretty quickly. I'm not sure if this is a hot take or not, but I actually don't mind the occasional winks or jabs in an audience. If it's done right, it can be fun and endearing, like we're all in on the joke. However, if these jokes are overdone or too harsh, they become insulting in an unfunny way. And look, I get that Hussey could get pretty frustrated with the audience. Homestuck mania was terrible, and everyone was growing increasingly frustrated with the secondhand cringe. But it's still kinda shitty to outright call your fans a bunch of childish weeaboos who overthink everything when you're out here writing a cartoony comic that requires a lot of thinking. Luckily, by the final stretch of Act 6, these jokes and meta-elements became far less prevalent, and I could actually go back to enjoying the story. Speaking of the end of Act 6, Part 4. Game over. Kind of. One of the reasons I put off finishing Homestuck for so long was that I kept hearing that the ending was disappointing. I didn't actually know what happened, I just knew that it wasn't received well upon release. Um, I, I actually like the ending. Quite a bit. Uh, spoilers ahead, I guess. I'm glad the story had a happy ending. Uh, there's some stuff left ambiguous, mostly revolving around Vriska's whereabouts, but for the most part I found it emotionally satisfying. 
I think a lot of people were expecting the climax to have more of a twist. Like, people wanted to see this epic plan go wrong in a cool way, but it just kind of goes as planned. This didn't bother me because the big, oh no, our plan has gone wrong part already happened in Game Over. Having another attempt succeed in a story with a happy ending seems pretty standard. Although I guess standard isn't exactly praiseworthy either. It's true that everything kind of went off without a hitch after the retcon, and maybe it's fair to say that such a sprawling and incredible story should have been more creative with its ending. I've also heard the criticism that the retcon itself was kind of lame. It's basically pulling a it-was-all-a-dream type of twist, but with extra steps. And yeah, I normally truly despise shows that retcon entire plots for the sake of convenience. But I guess I wasn't too bothered by this since I'm more fascinated with Homestuck as an experience than a plot, if that makes sense. The actual mechanic of the retcon is, in my opinion, pretty cool on a conceptual level, going back to pages you've already read and seeing the other places where they lead. Plus, as someone who read Homestuck before the retcon was written, I was very relieved to find out what all those goddamn question marks meant since I didn't fucking remember them being there when I was 16. On a smaller scale, there were also some details that left me and others kind of meh. It felt like some character conflicts were never properly resolved, either because of the retcon or things just happen off screen. I also found Dave Petta and Jaspros very annoying, and they were extremely weird 11th hour additions to the story. Lord English's defeat question mark does feel like kind of a loose end, and I can't tell if it's supposed to be left ambiguous or if Hussey just did not know how to wrap this up on screen. With all of that said, I guess my thoughts are the ending is good, but not as mind blowing as the end of Act 5. It definitely could have been stronger. Alright, I guess that's all I have to say about Homestuck. This video is over now, and I can move on with my- Oh. Oh wait. There's something else. Part 5. Press F for Flash. At the beginning of this video, I said that Homestuck was being reformatted so it could be read even if Flash was disabled. I didn't say it was being reformatted well. Okay. Um, I don't even know where to start. Uh, I guess the least offensive thing was replacing the animations with embedded YouTube videos. I mean, it still sucks, since the people managing Homestuck.com have to rely on another host site, and the embedding doesn't look nearly as good as just having the animation play. Plus, the video quality is notably lower, like, like it looks really bad. But whatever, it's forgivable. What they did to the Flash games is not even slightly forgivable. Some of the early ones are in this weird text format where you choose which screen to go to next, and it's extremely tedious and annoying. The later Flash games are just in YouTube video format, so if you read the comic without Flash, you'll basically end up watching a playthrough. It's not as bad as the weird text option thing, because at least you get the proper visuals and sound design, but it's also a sad reminder that what you're looking at was designed to be played and not watched. I want to control the pacing of the dialogue, and maybe I don't want to look at every single object in the room. Also, fucking pour one out for the puzzle game at the beginning of Act 6, Act 3. Great. I love it when I get to watch a walkthrough of a puzzle instead of actually figuring it out myself. Equally as fun. At the very least, the game where Mino walks around the afterlife to meet all the Dancesters is still playable. I'm beyond thankful for this because that shit takes forever and I honestly don't think I could take just watching it for hours. Also, the last page straight up doesn't make sense anymore. The page before the credits slash epilogue is a short little flash that ends with a phone Snapchat notification going off, and then clicking the notification takes you to the end. Well, that second last page is a YouTube video now, so you can't click the notification and there's no fucking arrow button, so you just have to trust your instincts and type the URL of the next page. I don't know how they missed that. So yeah, Homestuck is objectively worse than it was a few years ago. That's pretty fucking rough, not gonna lie. In a perfect world, there would be a stronger reformatting plan with higher quality videos and maybe different game mechanics. 
But to be fair, that would be a massive undertaking, and the people involved are all working on other projects, so this is what we have for now. Oh, plus the unofficial downloadable version, which I heard works a lot better, so that's cool. Read that one. So, what's the verdict? I hate to say it, and like, I really hate to say it, but Homestuck is really, really good. It's utterly fucking fantastic. I may have problems with it, but the good outweighs the bad to an overwhelming degree, in my opinion. Fuck it, it's 2022, cringe culture is dead, and life's too short not to read good things just because a bunch of annoying 13-year-olds liked it 10 years ago. Alright, that's it. Those are my thoughts. Well, what are your thoughts? Did you read Homestuck as a kid or as an adult? Did you love it or did you drop it? Uh, did this video just confuse the hell out of you because you've never read it and have no clue what I'm talking about? Uh, let me know in the comments and maybe subscribe or watch some of my other videos if you feel like it. Okay, but- oh, wait, shit. Um, I should also talk about the dubiously canon stuff and like the sequel, like Homestuck 2. Um, I haven't read them, and I never will. Okay, bye.